Hey guys, David Fine here from Keys Moths. As you can see guys, I love to breed butterflies and moths and document their life cycles scientifically. And I've got several projects that I've got going here. These are all gonna be different videos because what I, I wanna do is I wanna kinda go into detail about some of them. And uh, I wanna share with you, like here I've got a mystery caterpillar that we found in the Keys on Florida Tamarind, which I'm gonna go I'll, I'll do a whole nother video just on the mystery caterpillar. Down here, we've got some tussock moths. Here, I've got a sphinx moth caterpillar from the Florida Keys. But today's video, guys, is going to be about the hammock skipper caterpillars, and or in this case, chrysalises. We actually found some hammock skipper uh, polygonia leo. It's the hammock skipper. It's a tropical butterfly that lives in the uh, down here in southernmost Florida, they're actually kind of like a city bug because there's a tree, Indian pongam, that the hammock skipper uses as a larval host. That tree, the introduction of that exotic tree, has expanded the butterfly's range. And so it used to be just the, uh, Monroe County in the Florida Keys, Miami-Dade County, maybe a little bit of southern Broward County, where Jamaican dogwood the tree grows and that's the larval host plant for the hammock skipper um, but you know that's only in the hardwood hammocks and for for whatever reason i don't know why but we don't have a lot of jamaican dogwood trees used in landscape plants and if you've ever been to south florida you'll know that it's a concrete jungle i mean there's almost no natural area any little glint little patches of natural area are um, are protected now, or they're part of a park system or something like that. But, you know, most of Southeast Florida, coastal Florida, are neighborhoods, there's parking lots, there's shopping centers, there are golf courses, uh, that kind of stuff. And there's very little natural area where native vegetation is growing. And that's what the hammock skipper would use to live. And that's where they live, like down in Florida Keys, if you walk through the hammocks of North Key Largo, you're going to see hammock skippers pretty regularly because Jamaican dogwood is all over the hammocks. It grows very regularly. But down here in South Florida now, like in the, you know, in Broward County, Dade County, it's, it's concrete jungle, right? So we've replaced native jungle with concrete jungle and hammock skippers and a lot of the other butterflies and moths that we enjoy down here in South Florida. They just can't hang in these places. However, Indian Pongam, I've got some trees over by my house over here. They, that It's also a host plant for the fulvus hair streak. And I have some videos on the fulvus hair streak that the larvae eat the leaves of this uh, Pongam tree as well. Now, Polygonia leo, it's actually fairly regularly seen at butterfly gardens in urban South Florida. And reason being, there's enough of this exotic Indian pongam tree, Pongamia pinata is the name of the, uh, the, the tree that we're talking about. And because there's so many of those, there are enough hammock skippers to maintain a urban population. Not many species of butterflies can do that. Hammock skippers one because of this exotic tree. Now, this tree I I understand is part of a do not plant list by uh, I guess it you know drops the seed pods and the trees sprout up. They're not being planted, but they are beautiful trees. And I've got some right down the street from my house, right behind a shopping center. There's a whole line of them underneath this power line, and I get to go there every spring when they push out new growth. Um, the Indian pine gams are a great place to not only see the hair streak and the skipper, but also they flush out all these new flowers like May, like end of April, May, early June, and tons of lysenids, all kinds of day flying moths, beetles, bees, wasps, flies. They love the nectar from the blooms of this legumous tree. And they're very closely related. The, the, the Indian pine gam tree is very cr closely related to the native Jamaican dogwood tree. So um, guys, I'm going to stop blabbing my mouth now and I'm actually gonna show you, we actually got two chrysalis of 
the hammock skipper. So I'm going to show these guys to you right now. I've got one that's starting to color up actually. So I'm anticipating that it'll emerge sometime in the next day or two. And then I've got one that's still green. So I'm going to show this to you guys right now. This leaf right here, guys, is actually the leaf of the Jamaican dogwood. And we found this chrysalis for the hammock skipper attached to this leaf. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you, it's starting to change colors. We can start to see the abdominal segments are starting to turn brown. We're starting to see a little bit of the head, the eyes coloration starting to form uh, and it's starting to turn colors. Now, the, the color they're supposed to be is this green coloration right here. This is got another day or two, but you can actually see that the wing pads are starting to color up there too. I don't know. These guys might both pop out in the next day or two. So we've actually got two chrysalis here of the hammock skipper. They, they have a pretty decent size wing pad, or I'm sorry, they have a decent sized silk pad that they attach themselves to the leaf. They spin a silk pad. You can see the silk pad down here on the bottom. And then when they spin that silk pad, the, the butt end or the end of the abdomen of the chrysalis this little appendage right here, this little dot, or this, or this little thin little appendage right here is called a cremaster. And the very tail end of that cremaster, there's all these little hooks. And those little hooks grab onto the silk pad. And that's how most butterfly chrysalis will hang onto the surface where they are. Now, skippers also have, they spin a girdle. So I'm gonna try and zoom in a little bit here. And you can see up near the head, there is a silk lasso that goes from one side and attaches to the leaf. And it girdles itself and spins that piece of silk all the way around and attaches to the other side of the leaf. And here's what that does, guys. The, let me see if I can do this so you can see. I, I hang this chrysalis upside down. The cremaster sticks to the silk pad and the girdle helps the chrysalis head stay in place. So that's how butterfly chrysalises uh, will hang, uh, or at least skippers. You know, there's some that don't have a girdle. Nymphalids don't have a girdle. Uh, what other ones? Nymphalids don't. Well, swallowtails will make a girdle. Pyarids will make a girdle. Um, I think most other species make girdles. And so this, this hair streak, I'm sorry, this skipper species, as you can see, also has a girdle. And so uh, most of the time, guys, this, the pupa will, uh, the skipper pupae will be made inside of a leaf fold. And, you know, in the, both of these cases, this one actually, this is actually a wild coffee leaf. So this caterpillar actually crawled off of its host plant and made its chrysalis on a totally different plant. This one is actually made in on its native host plant. But when we found this one, there was actually another leaf that it had silken, like makes a little tent and covers itself and that's how they protect themselves. And so uh, guys, we're gonna show you when these guys pop out. It's super exciting to be able to have these here with you uh, to show you guys what's up. But what also what I'm gonna do, the cup where we have these things kept here, um, what we're gonna do, it has a paper towel and I'm gonna try and do this with one hand, which is never advisable because I can't film and do detailed stuff with one hand at the same time. But what I like to do, I like to make a paper towel ramp anytime that we have chrysalis because if we're putting the chrysalis in here, when the butterfly emerges, what the first thing it's going to do, it's going to instinctively crawl up. 
And so what we do is we put that chrysalis in, it's gonna crawl up. And then what we'll also do guys is we will actually take a piece of, a piece of paper towel like this. And we're gonna put this piece on top. And then we will snap our lid on top, just like this, okay? And oh, the reason we do that is you gotta give them a place to hang. And the paper towel provides a nice place for them to hang. So when this guy pops out, he'll have a place to crawl up with the ramp. And then there's a paper towel on top that he'll hang from to dry his wings properly, all right? Now, I got another cup and I'm actually gonna split these. These were actually in the same cup but I got another cup where we're gonna split these. So now we have both of our chrysalis and we are going to wait for them to emerge and we'll make some more videos then. So guys, hope you liked the video. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like butterfly breeding. And if you learn anything, let me know what you learned. Let me know what species you'd like for me to hunt for next. We're gonna to continue to show you Butterflies and Moths of South Florida and their life cycles. Guys, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and give me a thumbs up. Uh, Till next time, guys, let's get out there and enjoy South Florida and check out other videos. They're on their way. I'm gonna show you what all this stuff is. Take care, guys. Bye now. <laughs>